Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live and this is going to be a strictly technical video on how to open the project and how to merge the project to another one. First, I would like to point you to the project homepage at the Unreal Marketplace. If you have a look at these four yellow words, these are links and I really advise you to click on these links to open up the user manual and right on the first page you could update yourself when was the last update of this document what is the last release of Fluid Ninja Live and you could find the links for support and information and on the next page you could find the contents uh, describing how to use the project how to migrate the project how to access certain components, what uh, is the function of certain parameters, how to optimize it, uh, really have a look at this document. And the two most important things are printed in yellow. This is uh, merging Ninja Live to your project and adding Ninja Live component to your own actors. So, so mm, shortly we are going to talk about merging. And uh, this is uh, chapter nine in the PDF. It is a step-by-step -step guide. It's really just four steps. Uh, please have a look at this. Basically, in this video, we are going to going through uh, these steps. So, first, let's say you have downloaded Fluid Ninja Live um, and you have it zipped. So, uh, let's make a directory for it. Unzipping. And if you have a look at the U project with the notepad, you could see that the project has been made in Unreal 4.23. And we would like to maintain compatibility um, with uh, 4.24, 25 and 26. So we are not forking, we are not making separate branches, but we are trying to maintain this single branch until it's possible. So the first thing I would like to do is open this uh, 4.23 project in a 4.25 Unreal and see what happens. So I'm opening Unreal and trying to say import or open the project. I'm pointing it to the project, U project file, double clicking. And the first thing I notice is that Unreal is telling me that the project has been made with a different version. Yes, it is true, it has been made with 23 and now we are in 25, so I would choose open a copy. This is not an error message. It's a natural thing that Unreal would like to update the files to the version that we are using. Okay, the first thing uh, that we should do is to press play and see if everything is okay or not. Uh, try to go to the test levels and do as the instructions tell you, like uh, watching, visiting various scenes and in the Fluid Ninja folder, in the tutorial subfolder, you could find the levels. Uh, so please try to open up various levels, try to go through these stages and really just following the instructions and going through the levels one by one and figuring out if everything is fine, if things are working as they should be. And there's one thing I have, I have spotted on uh, level nine, for example. If I start this level and I approach this guy in the swimming pool, I could notice that the red balls are not leaving trails at all. Well, they should be. And in the manual you could read about this. The point is that uh, Unreal is not giving us any error message and there are no signs of deprecation or data loss, but still we have to open Ninja Live Blueprint, press compile, save, and if we play again the scene, the balls are leaving trails. So the thing is, it looks like if we are uh, loading an older version, Unreal Project to a newer version, we have to compile one or two blueprints 
to make sure that everything works fine. But apart from this one scene, in my experience, everything was working fine. Okay, so we did the checkup and we have this basic project in uh, 4.25. The next thing we would like to do is to merge the project. And to do this, I'm opening a completely new Unreal project from scratch. Um, this is going to be like a standard template. Say games. Uh, yeah, I'm picking the third person. With maximum quality blueprints. And I'm picking a folder for it. Say it's the merging demo. And it should be named like default TPS. Let's create this project. Yeah, Unreal is working on it. So here we go. This is our empty project. And we are going to merge Fluid Ninja Live into this project. Um, returning to the manual, step one is adding a custom trace channel. So let's do this. I'm opening the project settings, starting to type in trace and here we go new trace channel it is called fluid trace and it should be set to ignore uh, fluid ninja live is going to use this to track object collisions i say accept and it's done the next thing i would like to switch on it's step two in the manual is to enable this switch support uv from hit results this is going to help 3D Ninja Live to convert uh, three-dimensional spatial data to the two-dimensional fluid simulation space. And I'm telling Unreal to restart later. Because there's one more thing we need to do. I'm closing the project settings, going plugins, and typing in Apex. And I'm enabling Apex. And I'm asking Unreal to restart now. So. Uh, what we did is that we have uh, set up a standard Unreal project for Fluid Ninja Live merging. So our project is done and I'm quitting Unreal. Here's the folder that Unreal has created recently, default TPS. I'm entering the content folder and I am simply copying the content folder of the Fluid Ninja Live package. You see, we are in the Fluid Ninja Live project, in the content folder, and in the content folder we have a Fluid Ninja Live subfolder. And I'm copying this content subfolder to the contents of the target project. So, as you see, we have the third person assets here, and Fluid Ninja Live has appeared in the Windows File Manager. And it's done. So I'm starting the project. And since I have prepared the necessary uh, system level setup and I have copied the necessary files, uh, Fluid Ninja Live is appearing here. I'm recoloring it to red to a little bit differentiate it. And let's see if it works or not. First thing I would like to do is to drag and drop this autonomous container on level, resize it a little bit on the live interaction panel. I'm setting the trace mesh size and the interaction volume size from one to five. And I'm starting the project. And here we go. Our default mannequin is walking in this smoky puddle, colliding with it and producing this fluid sim. So uh, shortly, uh, that's uh, <laughs> uh, how we merge Ninja Live to a standard Unreal project. And there are so many things to do, and we will do these things. But first, I would like to get to the next point. So we have done this merging to a standard project. And what I would like to do next is merging it to a project which has a custom trace channel. 
Looks like Unreal is a bit sensitive with these trace channels, so we should be careful. I'm saving this project, the standard TTS, and I have uh, already prepared this project absolutely the same standard TPS exact um, except I have added one single trace channel so I'm starting the project and I'm going to perform the same steps as before um, first I'm going to the project settings typing trace and as you could see we have one trace channel already in the project. This is a user-defined trace channel. I gave it this name. Uh, it could be more, but the point is that we have trace channels that are not part of the default Unreal set. So we, what we have to do is, as the manual points out, is to remove this trace channel, add fluid trace, and re-add the original channel. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. It has been called user defined trace channel. I'm deleting it. I'm adding fluid trace. Setting it to ignore. And re-adding the user defined trace channel with the default response of blocking. So we have two trace channels now, but the point is that fluid trace is number one. This is very important because seemingly if you place it uh, second in this list, uh, it's not going to work. So we have done this and we do uh, the same thing with the UV. We're starting later, please. And we do the plugins with the Apex, enabling it. And yes, please restart now. So we have a modified project with a custom trace channel. And we have uh, prepared this project to merge Ninja Live. And I'm going to do the same thing, opening up the content folder of the project, entering the content folder of Ninja Live and copying the Fluid Ninja Live subfolder, and it's done. So I'm starting, restarting the project again. And repeating the previous step, I'm going to this uh, Fluid Ninja Live subfolder, and dragging the Ninja Live actor on level. Again, setting the scale to 5 and checking if it is working or not and fine so we have merged Fluid Ninja Live to a project with a custom trace channel um, an important thing I would like to show you going back to Windows file manager so we are in the TPS project folder and I'm entering the configuration the config subfolder here you could find a file called default engine in it. I'm opening it up with a Windows text editor and looking for fluid trace. Uh -huh. These two lines are very important. Uh, you might notice that uh, they belong to this default channel responses flag and they have um, an integer index number besides them. And so Fluid Ninja Live should be Game Trace Channel 1. Otherwise it will not work. And I'm closing this ini file, returning to the editor. And we'll see a bit more if I'm uh, resetting this transparent material to uh, an opaque one. I'm selecting Ninja Live component. You might have noticed that I have rescaled the actor detail panel to reveal the full list of these actor components. Again, returning to the website, here's this frequently asked questions document. I'm just opening it up 
And the first and most important question, how do we localize <laughs> the Ninja Life component panel? And here is this visual guide for it. Where you scale the panel and try to select the component that way. So again, I'm advising you to visit these PDFs, these manuals, and watch the tutorial videos because these are key uh, to understand these little nuances of how Ninja works. Returning to the Unreal Editor, I have selected Ninja Live component and in the Live Generic options we have like output materials. It's a, a user-defined list, so you could add your own materials here, but I'm spotting that we have an opaque material at the zero slot. So I'm rewriting this number to zero and hopefully we have like an opaque red container. Okay. Um, <coughs> Once you have merged Ninja, the next thing you would like to do is to filter interactions and figure out which objects could collide with the container and which objects should not collide. Right. Um, if you click on this uh, simulation container in the live interaction group, you have this uh, overlap filter inclusive. This is uh, the list of classes that the container is uh, currently expecting. Static, dynamic, destructible, pawn, and physic body. If I'm clicking on the roll down, this is the full list. So um, Ninja Live is configured to recognize these five classes. And say you have a, a skeletal mesh or a pawn that not belongs to this class. For example, I'm selecting the third person character, selecting the mesh component, jumping to the mesh component in the content browser, dragging it on level. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, while a uh, normal mannequin is leaving these wide trails, uh, the skeletal mesh seems somewhat shy and leaving only a single spot. And this is because it is not properly recognized. What we should do is, and again it is described uh, in the manual, go to the details panel, to the collision settings, and configure this physic actor as pawn. And hopefully now all bones being dragged. Now what if I don't want all bones being dragged? Just uh, the legs, say, with, or the feet. Again, I'm selecting the container and uh, just a second. In the live interaction group, I could provide bone names, exact bone names, or it might be enough it, if I write in a part of a bone name, say foot, and see what happens. Well, uh, Ninja Live is filtering all the bones which are called foot or contain this string in their names. As you could see, the setting applies to all actors in the container. Or I could provide exact bone names, um, selecting the actor, going to the interaction group, removing the partial name, and adding two slots to the exact name definition and saying calf left and calf right. See what happens. Yep, only two bones are being tracked. So this is how I have been filtering for the pawn class. Reconfigured the skeletal mesh to be a pawn class and how I provided bone names. Mm, the next thing I would like to do is to um, add some random object. I'm rescaling it to be the size of a full ball. I'm enabling it to behave like a football. And here's the key setting, in, again, in the collision settings. I should say that it should generate overlap events. Otherwise, Ninja Live will not be able to detect its overlapping. So here we go. 
As you can see, uh, the ball has a small uh, smoky trail around it. And it's going to be a bit fast, yeah. <laughs> How about giving it a bit more weight? Making it like uh, 500 kilograms. That's a heavy ball. And here we go. We have defined this overlap thing for the ball. And we have defined this skeletal mesh thing in the manual going uh, to the contents you see 10.5 interaction setting up objects to trigger ninja live response uh, this is the place where these tricks are described and most importantly if you go to the fluid ninja live per tutorial per levels we have like a 20 separate levels and these levels have been made to demonstrate all these possible settings for example uh, we have seen a destructible colliding here or on other levels uh, we could see uh, a high resolution ray march setup and we have all these setups and if you click on the containers in these setups you could easily uh, have a look at these parameters and figure out how these settings are used. So I advise you to have a look at this 20 tutorial levels and have a look at the manual PDF and the frequently asked questions PDF. And that's how you get to know Ninja Live. And later on I am coming up with more tutorials. Well, mm, that's it for now. Thank you for your patience and see you next time.